everybody. Welcome back here. Sports Talk Nation. Michael Cohen here with you as we continue our discussion here as NFL Free Agency is about to kick off this week on Monday. And really, it's going to be an all-week thing. It's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week. It's going to be absolute mayhem as we're going to see players moving off the uh, so-called free agent board like this. It's going to be it's going to be wild. So before we get going, we are approaching. Last I checked, we were at 994 subscribers. We are fast approaching one thousand subscribers so tell everybody about this channel like and subscribe let's hit a thousand and let's go well above that as well so let's kick things off here at the jets and this is going to be a big off season and that's without that saying this is really it for joe douglas and for robert sala we all know that coming off of last season's disappointment Obviously, the Aaron Rodgers injury playing a big part of all that with the Achilles tendon, but just a down-and-out, bad season. The team wasn't ready for Aaron Rodgers to go down. They didn't have a backup plan. They rolled with Zach Wilson. They tried to make that happen. It did not work at all. So the question's now going to be, among many things that the Jets have to do, who do they get to be the backup quarterback behind Aaron Rodgers? How do they f- solve that issue? What do they do at wide receiver? They need help there because, as we all saw with guys like Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb, didn't didn't lead to a lot of success there at all. What are they going to do in the offensive line, which needs retooling? What are they going to do even to solidify this defense? And yes, the Jet defense was very good last season. <clears throat> I understand that. But when you have a number of guys like Bryce Huff, who is a free agent, may end up signing elsewhere. C.J. Mosley could be a cap casualty unless the Jets restructure his deal. All these questions have to be answered. And we'll start to get answers in the next several, day, next several days. So where do I begin? Now, I could begin here with the interview that uh, Aaron Rodgers did, uh, did on a podcast in which he said that he plans to play as many as three to four years. Now... He may say that we'll have to wait and see. As we all know, coming off of the coming off of the Achilles tendon injury, let's just see if he can stay healthy for one full season before we talk about and project potentially playing for a few more seasons. Is that a shot across the bow of any potential that the Jets may draft a quarterback at some point in this draft? I have no idea. I'm going to save that discussion for another video because I did I did see some people kind of bantering about that. It's an intriguing storyline, and I know that a lot of people have been talking about the the quarterbacks that are coming out in this this draft class. I'll save that for another day. But really what I really want to focus on is everything else that's going on with this team. And I'm going to start with, obviously, we'll start with the quarterback again. We'll start with Zach Wilson. You know, what can the Jets do as far as trying to ship him out of town? It's been tough to try to find someone who is willing at this point, everything that's been said, to take on that contract. Now, the Jets, from what I understand, if they do not or are unsuccessful, in unloading, Wilson is due about five, about five, six million dollars this year. But if the Jets were to straight up cut him, that's an eleven million dollar cap hit. So obviously the Jets want to avoid that. They want to ship him somewhere. They have no interest in picking up obviously the fifth year option. So where are they going to send him? That is the big question as they try to make room to get somebody else in here to pack up Aaron Rodgers now. We've heard the Rams get banted about. I just saw a report here that perhaps the Minnesota Vikings could be a destination. At least the Athletic is predicting that they could be a destination. We'll have to wait and see. But the bottom line is the Jets have to move on from him, and they will move on from him. It's time to move on. Who they bring in as far as free agents are concerned? Again, there are a lot of names out there. The ones that get banted about the most, obviously, are Jacoby Brissett, Gardner Minshew. Those are some of the big names out there as far as free agent backup quarterbacks are concerned. I would love to see the Jets get Jacoby Brissett. I think he would be a nice fit. Guy's been a journeyman. He's been around a lot of teams, Cleveland, Washington, Indianapolis. He's been really everywhere. But uh, I would like to get him, if I were the Jets, he's been with New England as well, get him. And let him be your backup quarterback for at least this year, for at least this year, maybe even for the next two seasons, and then well, we'll worry about that down the road. So that's what I would do. We'll see how that plays out. The big question is going to be is offensive line and wide receiver. Now there is a lot of rumors and speculation, of course, at this time of the year. Who are the Jets going to talk about, target? One name out there that's get, get one name out there is obviously Tyler Boyd. He is a free agent of the Cincinnati Bengals. 
solid, maybe more of a number two or number three receiver. Pretty good size, six foot two. Obviously, the Jets would love to get a receiver to not just compliment uh, Garrett Wilson, but also be somebody that they can put in in red zone situations. Someone that could go after the football. Let Rodgers high point the football into the corner of the end zone. Someone can go up and get it. Tyler Boyd would be the easiest way to solve that problem because, again, he is a free agent. But the one concern that I do have with him is that you look at his career numbers, and they've really been going down virtually every year since 2020. 2019 had 1,046 yards receiving, 90, 90 catches, had a career year. Hasn't come close to uh, even duplicating that since. He's played in every game every year, so his numbers have taken a drop back. Is he someone you want to pay you know, top money for, for a receiver, I don't know if you want to do that. Maybe, as I see here, the projection from Sports Illustrated, two years, $18 million, $17.5 million. Maybe you do something like that to get somebody like a Tyler Boyd in in the fold. Now, perhaps the name to watch, of course, is going to be Calvin Ridley, another t- free agent out there, probably the top receiver at free agent available. Coming off probably the best year of his career, had over, had over 1,000 yards receiving, had eight touchdowns last year with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and is going to command a big contract. People are going to look at, at Calvin Ridley, who is really more of a speed player, um, 6'1", 190 pounds, more of a guy who can, who can use his legs in space to create separation. He would be, in a lot of ways, he's almost, he's almost like Garrett Wilson in a lot of ways with a, lot, with a little more speed. So he would be a very nice uh, pickup from that standpoint. But again, you're going to be paying, paying top-flight receiver money to bring him in. Uh, again, PFF projecting he could see anywhere between $21.5 million guaranteed. So there's another potential uh, player out there as well. One name that I saw get a lot of pub from a lot of Jet fans on social media, YouTube, Twitter, you name it, was Cortland Sutton of the Denver Broncos. Now, again, a lot like Tyler Boyd has the perfect body type as far as being a receiver who can go up and get the football that gets high point into the corner of the end zone. He's six foot four. Uh, he is perfect size for that. He is a perfect complement, if you will, to a Garrett Wilson, uh, someone who is more of a big physical receiver that can stretch the field from that standpoint, especially in tight corners, tight windows. That's the kind of player you want to get and bring in here. Now, to get him, you're going to have to make a trade. And right now, Denver owns his rights. The Denver is also looking potentially, as I see the rumors here, maybe even Jerry Judy could be available. So they're trying to make some, they're making some major overhauls over there in Denver, as we know, with Russell Wilson now out. He's looking for a job elsewhere. So that is another name that's out there. I like Sutton just from the standpoint of the physical presence that he would bring compared to the others. But again, a little bit like Boyd, also a little bit of a numbers drop in the last couple of years, but still. These are names, these are players that you, if you're the Jets, they can produce for you. And these are guys that are still someone in the prime of their career, 28, 29 years old. They can give you something and hopefully give you some production as well at the wide receiver spot. But ultimately, what it's all going to come down to is going to be the offensive line. Now, Joe Douglas came in here six years ago, all right, and promised to fix this Jet offensive line. We all know that has not worked out. Mekhi Becton, injuries did not work out. Trying to shuffle players in and out. Guys like Ryan Khalil came in, came out. Not going to work out at all. Dwayne Brown, we saw the last couple of years. Injuries, too old, goodbye. What are they going to do to fix this offensive line? You know that Joe Tipman is probably going to be your center this year. You also know that AVT is going to be somewhere on that offensive line, whether it be left tackle or it be guard, we'll have to wait and see. Leads to that. The draft and free agency are going to be the prime places for the Jets to go out there and get some offensive line help. I know a lot of people are all in on saying, well, you know, if you get a wide receiver dropped to you in the draft at uh, number 10, you take them. Or, you know, what about Michael Penix? Here's my thing. You have to take an offensive lineman. This offensive line has been so bad for the Jets and was so bad last year. You have to address this offensive line problem, especially at the tackle position. Now you got again. I mentioned this in my Giants video, and I mentioned here Joe Alt is a player who a lot of people think is going to go early in the draft. Will he drop to ten? I'm not sure, but he is a highly regarded tackle from Notre Dame. He's a possibility. Obviously, Olu Fasuna out of Penn State, as well as Talise Fuaga out of Oregon State. Those are some of the big names that are out there 
at tackle that the Jets have certainly been linked to over the last you know, a couple of months now since this draft process started. The Jets are going to likely end up having one of those guys drop to them at 10, and if you're the Jets, you got to find a way. you you got to take one of them. you got to try to consider, think very hard trying to do that. Uh, now, as far as veterans are concerned, the two names that keep popping up are David Bakhtiari as well as Tyron Smith. Now, Bakhtiari is 33 years old. He is, of course, a former Green Bay Packer. You would imagine that Aaron Rodgers, who was very close to a lot of those guys in that Packers, those Packer teams, would love to have Bakhtiari come here and play for the Jets. And uh, we, I remember last year there was even uh, Rodgers uh, tweeting Bakhtiari at the time, say, hey, you know, we could use your help. So I would imagine he would be, if there's of all the veteran uh, linemen that are out there, you imagine that he would be the guy the Jets are going to look to try to bring in here now. I don't know if he's an, is a every damn left tackle at this point in his career. He has had injuries over the last couple of years. Uh, he hasn't played a full season since 2019, and as I mentioned, he is now 33 years old and only played in one game last year coming off of knee surgery. So I'm not against it if you're going to use him as a rotational player, maybe something you can use off the bench. I just don't see him as an every down left tackle at this point in his career. Same thing with Tyron Smith. Again, 33 years old as well. Also has battled injuries over the last couple of years with Dallas. Yes, considered one of the best tackles in the game, and certainly is going to have a deep market out there for him, not just with the Jets, but other teams that are looking to improve their offensive line help. You know, is he a fit? Obviously he would be because from the standpoint he would give the Jets uh, give the Jets an offensive lineman, a veteran presence they need. But again, age, injuries, injury history, those are things that concern me moving forward with someone like him. So the offensive line, how Joe Douglas build, builds this offensive line now for this season is the story going into the 2024 season. He's got to get it right. He hasn't gotten it right at times throughout his tenure here as the Jets drill manager. If he gets it right, then the Jets could be potentially a playoff team, maybe, if all things go, go well and they can stay healthy as a team. So those are things to consider. And also, let's flip it to the other side of the ball here. Bryce Huff looks like he could be a player who could be gone. He is. He wants a big contract. He wants to be a featured pass rusher. It would be a huge loss for the Jets if they lose him. Tara has sacks last season. You hate to see the Jets lose a player that they developed. And that's what they did with Bryce Huff, a guy who just came off the scrap heap. You hate to see them lose him. But this is what the NFL is. Players want to cash in after big seasons, and the Jets did not franchise tag him at all. And they are accepting the fact that there's a chance they could end up losing him. That would be a problem. The other two big names out there for the Jets, they have to really, really think long and hard about bringing in, back, bringing back here and resigning. Obviously, from the special teams, Greg Zerline and Thomas Morstead, these two guys, as far as I'm concerned, are a must. Um, you shouldn't have to spend a boatload of, boatload of cash to bring uh, get, a, get a kicker and a punter in here, but these two guys were very valuable for the Jets last year. Heck, you can make the argument that Zerline was the Jets' best offensive weapon last year. The guy was automatic every time he kicked a field goal. So those two guys, if you're the Jets, you have to find a way to get those two guys back into the fold moving forward. And even Rodgers mentioned Morstead as the, the Jets punter being a guy who needs to be brought back. He was a very valuable piece to that Jet team last season. So that's where the Jets are. It is now or never time for Joe Douglas. I'm very curious to see what the Jets do here starting on Monday and going throughout the course of the week next week as we begin to piece together the 2024 campaign. So folks, leave your thoughts below. Like and subscribe. We'll talk to you next time here on Sports Talk Nation.